Well, thank you all for joining us tonight for our open mic series. Uh, this is an ongoing series that happens every other Thursday. And my name is Nia, I'm the host, and I'm the public programs manager at the Museum of the African Diaspora. And as we gather here tonight, um, it's always essential to acknowledge the times that we're living in. And so we begin these events by grounding ourselves in the space. MOAD stands in solidarity with Black Lives Matter in recognizing and condemning the ongoing systemic violence against Black people. We honor and mourn the senseless murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Aubrey, Tony McDade, Casey Goodson Jr., Patrick Warren Sr., Andre Hill, and so many others who have lost their lives in police brutality and racial injustice, including those whose names we do not know. We want to acknowledge that Moad's commitment to racial justice is ongoing, and as such, we will continue to say their names and hold space to honor these victims. I also want to acknowledge the spaces that we're occupying. And though we're gathered virtually, many of us are settlers, immigrants, or descendants of those forcibly brought to this continent. And our institutions were founded upon the exclusions and erasures of the indigenous peoples whose lands we are located on. It's with deep respect that Moad acknowledges that even in virtual space, we reside on unseated of native lands and thank the indigenous peoples of the Bay Area and beyond who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. So again, thank you all for being here in this space. And these open mics, they're, they're places for us all to gather to recognize our grief, our anger, our exhaustion, and also to seek comfort and joy in each other's company. And so I know we all come here with the weight of the day with the, each of our own experiences. And so it's of the utmost importance that we continue to center respect. And so everyone is here, um, everyone is welcome. Um, and we wanna continue creating these spaces where we can amplify black voices and again, center respect. And I am so grateful that we have a wonderful feature this evening, Daniel B. Summerhill, who is joining us. And so I'll do a very quick um, overview of the flow of the tonight's event, and then we'll get into the poetry. So we'll begin um, the event with the first half of our open mic readers, and then Daniel will do his feature midway through and we'll wrap up the event with the remainder of the open mic readers. So each reader has uh, four minutes to share. Um, and I do ask that if you're not the person speaking to please keep yourselves on mute um, out of respect for the space. But I do encourage you to be typing in the chat uh, affirmations, air claps, snaps. Um, also encourage you to use the reactions anyways to um, keep supporting the people who are performing and you know it's a vulnerable space. So definitely being able to show up for each other is important. And I'll be putting the lineup uh, in the chat in just a moment as well. Um, and I'll read out each person's name before they go up. Uh, if for some reason someone isn't in the room when I read their name, um, but they come in later, we'll, we'll circle back and make sure uh, that we uh, get to them in the lineup. So with that, I would like to invite Ali Jones to start us off. Thank you. Thank you, Nia. I'm so glad to be here. Glad to be back. Um, what you were saying, you said exhaustion. I was like, ooh, I feel like there is this like collective exhaustion that we're all feeling right now. I know a lot of folks are burnt out. Um, so I just wanted to start us off. I love that I end up going first when I come here. So I wanted to start us off with our breathing. Um, I feel like we all forget to breathe. And so everyone's muted. So you can make whatever noises you need to. Um, I'm, I'm gonna invite us all just to take three collective breaths. And then I'm gonna share my piece uh, and, and then slide on to everybody else. I'm really excited. So take a deep breath in, really feel that coming in through your chest and then release it, really let it go. And take another deep breath in, feel the air flowing up, let it go. On this last one, I'm gonna invite you to make noise. Like I said, we're muted. So whatever ah or er or whatever noise needs to come out of you, just let it go. All right, so we're gonna take a deep breath in and let it out. Ah. So thanks for joining me, y'all. This piece is called Siren Rising. I don't wanna remember my life before mermaids. I was raised by saltwater queens, blessed by magical beings of mythic proportions, daughters of Yemeya and Gumbo. 
Those who remind me of the beautiful resilience that lives within us, coiled crowns adorned with cowrie, goddesses who maintain the grace of a gazelle with the ever-changing tides, Mesigan, my mermaid queens, flowing, crashing, rising. My grandma Genevieve, cayenne pepper royalty, celestial matriarch, soft yet steady as a metronome in the kitchen with the laugh that could brighten any dim room. Unafraid of what is to come because her certainty is founded in love. Her setbacks created the beginning of her greatest comebacks, flowing through the roughest currents and remaining strong, flowing, crashing, rising. Mother Teresa, calm like rosemary and gentle as gardenias, earth warrior who taught me to respect and protect the earth, to value all life forms, holding space for her softness and her offspring, unconditionally magical, conjuring potions that transform the flu into a slight sniffle or inventing the perfect bedtime story. She grew in the midst of adversity, never allowing fear to stop her pursuit crashing against every judgment or expectation with determination, flowing, crashing, rising. My mermaid queens, cousins who remind me I could do anything, sisters that challenged me to seek softness in times of pain and trauma, to look at myself untarnished by self-loathing, my aquatic angels, who kept me sane when all I thought I could be was crazy loving with our hearts wide open, guided by our gut feelings and our star signs. Rever, croyant, amant, et guerrier. Dreamers, believers, lovers, and warriors, rising above holes of doubt, insecurity, and fear, flowing, crashing, rising. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I always love when you go first because you ground us with the breathing and it's a lovely way to start. So thank you, Ali. Next up, I would like to invite Norm up to the mic. Welcome, Norm. Hi, good evening. It's a wonderful place to be, and I'm glad to be second. <laughs> I have three pieces, and I'm going to start off with this epigraph. This is called My Pyre. This is not a smile. These are not my teeth. These are charcoal briquettes. Fires burning, self-immolation, feed them ashes. This is some new shit. And um, I'm a little bit nervous reading this out here for the first time. But here it comes, there's no title. Mind spinning, heart breaking, soul shaking, time doing a retro. When we was getting out of our own way, just like we need more broken glass to crawl through. Gotta turn around in my own skin so I can watch my own back and the backs of the ones coming after us. Not my dream of a future that I wanna look back into. Next piece. This is called the language of my mood. Accomplishing expressions of feelings that have remained wordless and flammable quarantined by a fever, memory of flames show up on the outside. What had been pent up, burning back on itself, mind, emotions as fodder for a conflagration consuming what's left after the oxygen. Bones like ashes molded into embers become a coat of feathers on fire rise out of the abyss like a maiden voyage, navigating across the beacons of light, feeding me puzzle pieces 
finding their place, making me whole again. Peace. Thank you so much, Norm. It was fun getting to hear your new pieces. It's always, it's always lovely to hear them. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Next up, I would like to invite Stuart Shaw. Welcome, Stuart. Thank you, thank you. I have two quick pieces. Um, one of them I've never read, read before, so it's a new piece. I'm kind of dark here, I see. <laughs> um, so this one's called Plants and Trees for Eric Garner. Hardened trunks beating, bearing witness, winsome willows weeping, withering in winter. You plums itself, yellow and yawning, sweetly awake yet blossoms with a yearning for air, black roots, reaching distance, reaching, speaking to the other entangled roots. Embrace the oaks they could not save. Breach the streets and sidewalks, cement breathe with the trees, lungs sweetened by oxygen, breathe with him, for him. The plants convene a she bean, a juke joint, gathering, seeing green spaces open, drink and share stories. Tobacco, he still, still holding death tight. The darkness of oxygen deprived lungs is again disinvited. Stands blue and black in dusty light while the other plants breathe in, out empties their bellows, their bellicose lungs into the world, breathes till the rest can, refuses the notion of deprivation, the belief that anything should go without air. And my last piece here, when I rise, epigraph, first you love me, then you hate me, as a game for fools, break up to make up stylistics. No matter where I am buried, I return. The frightened always kill the black blood they covet and fear, yet here I am. When the ghost skinned ones bury me, they bury me with what they think is nothing. Those that love me call me friend cover me with feathers, entomb my body with direction to the old proving grounds that birthed me. And my peeps say, Lord Jesus, I reply, yes, yes. On the morning streets, sun god hot, I rise, play Osiris, play born again savior, bedevil the whiteness away cut through fog to good times on the next channel, the next black topped block. Some don't believe in salvation, don't believe in what they see stirring the waters, don't know that they can be saved from the devils and monsters, think that their future is behind them. Down by the rivers lay my body at the water's edge, taste of my flesh, slick and palliative on the tongue, drink deep. Black gods never die, just hide away till needed. I will extract the curse, the splinter in my thigh. From the grave, I will build grand homes from slave shacks, cover and house all my friends. Thank you. Wow, oh, thank you so much, Stuart. I really liked both of those pieces and they, they had a, a weight to them and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, I would like to invite Asandra Dalton. Welcome. Hi everybody. Um, I have one piece today. Um, to be completely honest, I'm not feeling the best today emotionally, but I hope this um, turns out good. Um, <clears throat> It's called um, Stranger Fruit. 
Tupac said, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. I say, the dark of the skin, the strange of the fruit. Some of you don't even know what this means or what this is. Strange fruit doesn't mean your barrel. You didn't hear these words as a kid. But education is important. I'll give you time to Google the meaning. And let's start over. For this poem is not for you, but for those who are grieving. Tupac said, the dark of the berry, the sweet of the juice. I say, the dark of the skin, the strange of the fruit. I can see your precious, I can see your precious sweet red blood oozing from your veins. I can feel the fear of your mom, these goosebumps, her birthing pains. For from the time you were born, she was afraid of her worst nightmare happening, you being made into a hashtag, into a picture on a screen, into a protest, into an, an uprising, into millions screaming, I can't breathe. If you don't speak up, then you're part of the problem. But what will words do to actually solve it? Because I need action. I need to see real change. I need to see more than you just type in hashtag say their name. I need more than you just on Instagram live at a protest or people think you're down. I need you to fight the systems of injustice against the black and the brown. I have a feeling that this will never be done. A doom may hope is feeling that true justice will never come. I have a feeling we'll always start 50 feet back with the exact same race to run. But the only good news is that just like my last poem, there is a sun. A son that died for you and me, the son that died for all of humanity. The son was the first strange fruit, the vine of life in which I take root. I don't think it's an accident that we were made of dirt. Sometimes in order to be planted, we have to be willing to be hurt. Those feet like copper resemble the dirt that we were made in. Those feet like copper left heaven to come to earth so that I could be cleansed of sin. Tupac said, the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. I say, the dark of the skin, the strange of the fruit. What is the solution to all of these problems and what can we do to actually solve it? Honestly, I have one answer. Get to know the strangest fruit. An unarmed man of color died because of false accusations. You may not know his name, but I'm referring to the one who defeated Satan. He deserved justice. If anyone can relate, it's Jesus Christ. He deserved justice because he is the one who paid the price. How much would you pay to save your soul? How much would you pay so that you could feel whole? Truth is, that's what you want deep down inside. At the end of the day, we just want love, though we call it behind our pride. You tried everything else and it didn't work. I tried petitions, amendments, protests, and I'm still hurt. I marched tirelessly for the killers to be arrested and put in jail, only to find out the next week that a million dollars was raised and now they're out on bail. Don't get me wrong, our rich education, equal distribution of resources, and fighting the system will actually make a real difference. But for me, it's just a cycle of pain, a cycle of relinquishing resistance. I'll leave it up to you to stop resisting the one who made you. His love extends past race and all time. But don't mistake me for being colorblind. Because I see the pain, I see the blood oozing from the fruit. But I also see the blood dripping from the one who made you. So please take my hand as I take this. Study the Bible with me and my friends so that amongst the dead you can live. Billy Holiday said, here is a fruit that crows to pluck for the rain to gather, for the wind to suck, for the sun to rot, for the, creep to, for the tree to drop. Here is a strange and bitter crop. Just like we did once, let's take it back to the top. Tupac said, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. I say, the darker the skin, the stranger the fruit. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Cassandra, for sharing that piece. So that was incredible. And thank you for being here and, and holding space with us, even if you're not feeling the best. That was, that was wonderful. I appreciate it. Next up, I'd like to invite James Cagney. Welcome, James. Hey, thank you for that, Nia. Hey to you and hey to everybody out there. And uh, congrats, Daniel, on the book. Um, I'd like to sprint through two poems really quickly. Um, this is the first one, it's untitled. Atmospheric arcades in an atrium of ash. Black holes barricade their secret compost of crushed cities in a crossfire of death documentaries, deliberately edited so that every execution ends in envelopes fanned out like fish scales or five card stud or geese gathered geometrically, herons hovering as for homecoming or hallucination, 
Invasive insects have made the inauguration inaccessible. A jigsaw of japonica petals justify knitting kite strings with kelp and knives lacerating a large amount of loose lemons. More metalhead machines, more muscular mirrors. It's our national nostalgia for natal narcotics or orphans overlooked in other parishes, prisoners in platform pumps of courts under quarantine quilts, a quiet riot of rhythms, rage residue scrubbed from a skeleton of soot. In this timeline, their throats ululate under upturned umbrellas, very violent voices in the vestibule. Where have all the winos wandered? An X of spit marks the solo in the xenophobic xylophone. Some yahoos yapping in the yard about its Yankee zealot from Zion zonked out on zucchini. Wow. Um, and this really quickly is uh, a pantoon. This is called Ghost Homies. <clears throat> Don't feel bad about yourself, but you a lunatic. The first time I see that, I'm out. Take your judgment where you going with it. You just want to be a ghost the whole time, punk ass? I ain't going to lie. You did your thing. You came from the other side and actually grabbed me. You can have all this of what you got. I'm going to get up out of here. Take your judgment where you going with it. You just want to be a ghost the whole time, punk ass? You got a child sitting there ripe for possession. You can have all this of what you got. I'm going to get up out of here. If you'd have been saved, you wouldn't be down here chilling. You got a child sitting there right for possession. I ain't gonna lie. You did your thing. You came from the other side and actually grabbed me. If you'd have been saved, you wouldn't be down here chilling. Don't feel bad about yourself, but you a lunatic. First time I see that, I'm out. All right. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate you. Thank you, James. Wow. You never fail to impress. Thank you for your poems. Next up, I would like to invite Melissa Noel. Welcome. Hey, Nia. Hi there. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. You know, it's always a pleasure uh, to uh, be in this house. Um, it is Poetry Month, so I am amongst legends here, and um, I'm feeling really good about it. So um, I'm going to do one piece for you tonight. And the title of it is Black Folks Used to Laugh Till Three in the Morning. Big Papa Boo would stroll in with the smell of filthy car engines and cheap vodka or gin. He pat me on my back and sat his work cap in his lap. And right there, he would stare as he sat back in his raggedy chair with one knee bent his arms folded tightly across his chest. His bursting brown eyes guided his head to lay back and rest. And as always, when he heard the worry in my mama's feet stampeding toward him, he just laughed and laughed till about three in the morning. He would mumble and grunt with a stutter over and over again, they don't want the black man to be better than them. Afraid of what else he might say too loud so us kids didn't hear, mama would make us all disappear, going back to our rooms with wonder and fear. Out of the barely open doorway, we would peep with hearts pounding and worry, a worry that kept us from all having a good night's sleep. Like many nights before, it would always repeat how mama would hug our daddy with one arm while her other arm wiped her flow of tears, tears that rolled down to the soles of her tender feet. But I wanted my daddy to know I was right there, right there drowning in his testimony, feeling the anger that you told me, wanting to run downstairs to hold you, your hand, your face, and kiss that lonely place, often zoning in your laugh and the footsteps that you pace. I am here, daddy, just for you. We can forget about it together and run to the store like we always do. You know, my ball is still stuck up on the roof. We can get a ladder, climb up, get it down. I mean, we, we, we got a lot of stuff to do. You at home now where everybody loves you. Those people at your job don't know you like we do. You are my daddy, my big papa boo. And, and, and there is so much I got to tell you, starting with the words, 
I love you. Daddy's face ignited with a smile as the record player started to jump and bump and jump with toes that tapped and splat and tipped and tapped. Lyrics began to clap when James Brown came on the stereo with that incredible line, gotta have a funky good time. Gotta have a funky good time. Before you knew it, hips and shoulders were in the center of the dance floor with voices singing and laughing for more. We flew down the steps and joined in on the fun, putting daddy in the center, putting him back at the top, back at number one. I watched them, my mama, my daddy, and my brothers and my sisters. It made me wonder what laughter really was. Was laughter about laughing at ourselves? Or was laughter a means to an end? Maybe laughter was that thing we did to connect or forget. Perhaps mom's Mabley said it best. The only thing an old man can do for me is bring me a young man, honey. Or, 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 or maybe it was Richard Pryor who brought us Mudbone, the junkie, and the attitudes of the brothers in the barbershops, those hilarious characters that moved us and left us in tears, tears of laughter. So big up. Big up to Paul Mooney, Robin Harris, Robert Townsend, Roman, Bernie Mac, Martin Lawrence, Adele DL, Bill Bellamy, Ricky Smiley, Cedric, Kevin Hart, Ian Mugga, Red Fox, Kimberly Leslie, Godfrey Carlisle, Dean Sinbad, Tiffany Samoa, Jay Farrell, Godfrey Monique, Steve Harvey, Jamie Foxx, Cheryl Underwood, Lou Nail, Earthquake, Romany, Tony Roberts, Tony Woods, Chocolate, Dave Chappelle, Lil Rail, Wanda Sykes, The Wayans, Montana, Kool-Aid, Isaiah. Isaiah, Mike B, J, B, Smooth, Gina, Yvonne, Orgy, Marsha, Warfield, and Dominique. And even though we know this list ain't complete, there are so many stand-up comedians who are using their words to stand up to defeat injustice with the medicine we call laughter. So with that, I hope y'all don't mind, because I'm going to say it again. There's a reason why Black folks used to laugh till about three in the morning. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Melissa, for that poem. I feel like I'm still taking all of it in and there was so much joy in the way that you shared that. Thank you. Next up, I would like to invite Quentin Collins up to the mic, welcome. Uh, thank you so much. and. Uh, thank you to our host. Um, thank you to the museum. Uh, also, thank you to everybody who's read before me. I'm just blown away and thrilled to be within the space. So um, I happen to be sitting in what's my makeshift pantry. So I'm going to read a couple of food related things. <clears throat> and this first one's called Ode to Hot Flamens. Fingers slathered in blood, red residue, sticky dust, saliva soaked remnants of inferno inside Chester Cheeto. We crunch silence, rumble between teeth, exhale hot breath, tongues scarlet burning, mouths caress carnage, Cheeto chunks crushed in molars. Don't you know crunchy curls could never ignite the heat of many hands standing sanguine fighting for a bag of hot flamens? Chili crusted corn snacks slur words, spit sucking heavy breaths. We pray to water swished over gums, gargle for grace, the burning. Tangy flame tingle nestles on taste buds. Snot exiled noses from fingers, palms, knuckles. We lick every grain and snatch more fistfuls of fire. And the second poem is called Making Kool-Aid. My daddy, early mornings home from work, his uniform cherry dusted, tropical punch powdered. Charcoalberry fin shade stained navy blue fabric with craft food stitched on the breast. I thought his job was to make Kool-Aid and I wasn't wrong. Spoon stirred sugar and water. Water spout spun in the pitcher. Sweet grains swam in the mixture. Pitcher bottom congregations of sugar when waves settled. We poured a glass and a glass and a glass and a glass and a glass of pineapple Black cherry, lemon lime, lemonade, orange. Pitcher empty, we mixed another batch. Water swirl colors like washing machine drainage when mama washed daddy's uniforms. Sweet rainbow spun flavors. 
Kool-Aid packet lip ripped open, we emptied powdered into pitchers or palms on playgrounds. After truths and dares, we slurped the spit and powder slurries, index fingers sticky stained, tongues and gums glossed in grape, strawberry, kiwi, watermelon. Little pushers, we peddled packets from pockets, a quarter a piece, two quarters for sugar to cut the sour, Ziplocs with multicolored mixtures. Quarters clicked in my palm. I made Kool-Aid, commodity profits when my father peeled off into sleep after he worked a third shift, ensuring conveyor belts kept the drink mix moving. Kool-Aid packets pushed from factory floor to pitcher to another glass, sugar speckled after we swallowed the last drop. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Both of those were, those were great. And I love the inspiration of being in your makeshift pantry. That's wonderful. Thank you. So I'm going to share a couple pieces and then introduce our feature for this evening. I was really struggling to figure out what to read today because I have not been writing anything new in a while. So these are gonna be some pieces, some older pieces. Uh, the first of which I feel like I probably wrote around 2015, 2016, but it, it's a tribute to my love of dance. If I could dance to the harmonious rhythm of pen to paper, I would. I would spin and twirl to the sound of flourishes, leap and tumble to the beat of the solid punctuation littering a once blank page. My calm inhalations keep time for the letters as they bundle together into words. Faster and faster I go, now bounding towards the margin that holds a much desired pause. The safety of the wings is in sight. And the final leap sends me soaring onto the curve of the expectant question mark. Heavy breaths mark the conclusion of this much needed run on sentence and up again, tapping, tapping and shuffling along the college ruled dance floor. I sway to the sing-song rhyme of words laughing across the page. Concentrate. One misstep in this handwritten tune will join the dissonant drafts in the silence of the waste paper basket. A final bow approaches as the letters slow, stutter, and roll off of the page to the tune of an unfinished dot, dot, dot. Written here is the italicized melody of footsteps, synchronized. Footnote, what a perfectly relevant word. How else can one combine the loose ends that connect dance to the written word as it comes alive on the page as we readers' eyes dance upon daily? And this next piece that I'm going to share is entitled Memory Work. I am made of ship sails, railroads built for running, from people who work the land and the water, those who temper the tide and sow seeds and seams. See, we are a patchwork in this American dream. Bloodlines strong like backstitches, legacy built on stovetop shrines. History makes home and handmade quilts and childhood anecdotes. Resistance don't take no backseat and we all don't look the same. So say my name, say my name right. Resilience is homemaking and trailblazing. But don't call me your poster child of problem solving. Your dream so wet with multiple boxes to be checked. Your next victory at pin the tail on the race. Your consolation prize when you say America would never. There's no time to play silent savior nor model minority. For what is the price when assimilation was the name of the game, citizenship seen as success? What do we unremember when language is lost before the young are born? When storytelling is our only way back home? Thank you. It is now my honor to introduce our feature for this evening, Daniel B. Summerhill. He is an assistant professor of poetry and social action and composition studies at California State University, Monterey Bay. He's performed in over 30 states, the UK, and was invited by the US Embassy to guest lecture and perform in South Africa. 
His work has appeared in or is forthcoming in Obsidian, Rust and Moth, Button Poetry, Cogs, The Hellebore and others. His collection Divine, Divine, Divine is available now from Oakland-based press, Nomadic Press. Welcome, Daniel. Guys, um, thank you, uh, Nia, for that for the introduction and, and for everything. And it's so wonderful to, to share this space with you all. Um, and then to follow that, that that really dope poem, and then the homie Quentin. Uh, you know, um, again, I'm I'm just I'm filled right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some 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 poems, some some old joints and some new joints, um, and get out y'all way. So this first poem is called. Um, Footnotes for Kanye, and it's after uh, the homie Jasmine, Jasmine Mans. Footnotes for Kanye. The first time I heard pray for Kanye was at a Black Lives Matter rally. Not that prayer is antithetical, but prayer next to anti-Blackness is a flood, not a life raft. Two. As if there isn't a grandmother's last, last breath interceding for even the most defiant among us. Three, there is something to be said about dying before death. How suffrage isn't always the antecedent. How some of us find glory in drowning. Four, politics have taught me your desires, yea, no matter how deviant, don't outweigh your means. And for that, I am afraid. Five, I asked my mom about the world without the woman who birthed her hold at Wauwatosa. She smiles and asks me to pass her the salt. Six, I'm afraid because any day without a mother's smile is no day at all. Seven, because if not God, my mama. Eight, if not a life raft, a flood. Nine, I'm afraid because you ain't talked to God in so long. Ten. Yay, are you more brave than free or more ignorant than a housefly missing the door? 11, do you miss the door? 12, when I listen to no church in the wild, your voice is both the mob and the non-believer. 13, are you still famous in your hood? 14, because these kids still want to be you. They want to rap and make soul beats just like you even though you just not you. 15, tell me, now where the South slide? Uh, word, um, so I'm gonna read uh, this next joint, which is called um, The Day After Fruitvale. And it's actually from my forthcoming collection, uh, which drops on the 17th, uh, as Nia mentioned. So you can, um, if you'd like, you can purchase that. Uh, and check out this poem for yourself. It's called um, uh, The Day After Fruitvale. The Day After Fruitvale. Because Oscar Grant's killer hadn't been cuffed, a Volkswagen Passant was in flames outside my apartment window because I lived uptown and the Oakland police station was two blocks away and because folks care more about cars than bodies and because my people know that, shit goes up in flame. Because our protest is mistaken for riot and not peaceful, my people's eyes tend to tear, gas fills our blocks. And because Oscar laid in his own blood, my people lay in front of cars on Interstate 880. And because folks care more about a commute than a community, it's illegal to march on the highway. And because my people know that, they march on the highway because mourning is an empiricist on ecstasy and words often lack sense. The crust of a stone in hand and half drunk Molotov cocktail is the greatest filling and standoff with blue and black. And because moms would have seen me on TV, I placed the amplifier in my second story window instead. And because music sings in our name, my people sung, we gonna be all right on 23rd street. Um, all right, this one's called Albany Middle School Teaches a Lesson on Entrepreneurship. Our book bags be a black market. Meager juveniles brandishing singles behind black top filled fingernails and back pockets void of wallets. By nine, I break even. 
Jamel prize open his second box of Starburst, while Kumi broker six bucks to a sixth, sixth grader for the lack of supply and huge demand. Half past noon, our surge comes to a halt and we gather behind the B building to compare profits and crack jokes on Jamel's short shorts. Tuesday through Thursday be the same saga, transactions in the hallways, while Friday be a Sabbath, a space for us to take flight over the basketball court with our Nikes. On Sunday, Costco be a kingpin that knew we'd never miss a re-up unless Miss Peggy called our mothers in for a meeting to discuss the school's drop in lunch sales. Monday be a chalk talk, our first lesson on the ways our brown bodies aren't allowed to yield the same way other bodies are, aren't allowed to multiply the same. Cool, 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 cool. Um, all right, I'm gonna read a poem. The next poem is, is, a, is a bit older um, and it's called Tell Them. All right, to pull it up here. All right, tell them. The first time my son asked me how to respond to the white kids expecting him to be the spokesperson for Black History Month, I'll sit him down, look him in his eyes and say, son, tell them that you are not a teacher and they should be glad it's that way. Tell them that your skin is a museum, the hands off kind. Tell them that it's always been that way. Tell them that your history did not start in the 60s or Jim Crow or with hoses and police dogs. The second time my son asked me how to respond to the white kids expecting him to be the spokesperson for Black History Month, I'll say, tell them to pick up, pick up a book, tell them to read a tombstone, a eulogy, tell them their great grandparents to use books, but not to read, tell them they used a Bible as a booster seat while electrocuting every muscle in his body and somewhere between those pages rest enough gospel for even the greatest sinners, tell them, George Stinney was 14 when his body became a song without a melody, how you can still hear the vibrations of his vocal cords warming up, as if recital or tiny chorus searching for the right pitch of melanin to sing in tell them, his story has not evaporated, but is cumulus, a silent rage above our heads reminding us that rain showers are beautiful parades that we have misunderstood tell them, Angels taught little George how to read and spell redemption in three languages. Tell them that a black body is a vessel for fear, fire, and blues, or the lack thereof. Tell them each pigment is a syllable, a poem you can't shake. Tell them poetry is weaponized love, meant to shake your tears loose, shake you the way they shook George's body in that chair, shake you the way his wrist shook shackled, the way our hands shake when you ask us about February, tell them, the last time you checked, you were black in June and October too. Tell them to take a rain check, to ask you how you feel about Black History Month in July. Tell them, we will not die here today. Tell them, we will celebrate, we will celebrate instead. Um, cool, 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 cool. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go with, um, all right, so this next poem is called, um, I'm just breezing through uh, y'all, so, so, so bear with me. Um, next poem is called Life Support. And it's also a, a, a fairly old, older piece. She, mahogany skinned, 101 braids, fingers rough from strumming six acoustic peacemakers, 6 a.m. and she can't tell if the sun is setting or rising, if the heaven of her crown is done making music if the variations of her foot pedal are done making love to the virgin bass lines of her creativity, cloud 11 highs and low seas. And I wonder what's in an artist? Does she jones for a creative fix? Does the calligraphy of her thoughts paint eardrums with cleft notes, concepts and consciousness? Does every rhythm dance to its own melody of bliss like endorphins engulfing you? Blunt, rapped, jazz, blues, fusion, anything with a cool enough hook will make you think you're sitting on the front stoop of heaven, sipping red Kool-Aid with Minnie Ripperton, the sky playing the clouds like a sweet symphony, while nostalgic of Herbie Hancock at the Linux Lounge in 64. He erases curiosity with the swift stroke of every paintbrush reminding us all that 
Mona Lisa was just a martyr for the free world, that Leonardo da Vinci 1498, The Last Supper is a foreshadow, and that Starry Night is Van Gogh's false interpretation of heaven, because every time he mixes black and white on his palette, he never seems to get race riots, just many different shades of gray, shades of uncertainty. The only thing certain is that I have a lifetime of denotation, but only a few moments to explain that whether you rap on a street corner or dance for Alvin Ailey, that our mission is the same. That whether Miles Davis makes you want to write a hook, write a book or a love letter, lo love letter where you're all synonymous to expression in beauty's rawest form, odes to human existence and poetry. Poetry is the only safe interpretation of God. Poetry is the way we make love. Poetry is a fist full of Malcolm X Little. Poetry is me knowing how to use my tongue. Poetry is just Webster with exponents. Don't call me an artist because I have a punchline and a metaphor. Call me a question mark in the shape of a man or just a man with a million questions trying to make sense out of a world that celebrates spring season in early December, night times that never seem to consent birthing the sun the next day. And some mornings I wake up wondering, where have all the poets gone? What makes an artist? And what have they done with Lauren Hill's tongue? When did the sound of Nina fade to falsetto? When did the low in theory become less than theory? Massively written moments mangled into margin, an ivy stitched world robbed of its culture. Time stands still and there's no music to make you move, no paint to mask your insides, and no conversation between your heart and your mouth. These poems will be my martyr. These eyes will sparkle like a handful of diamonds unclenched. This tongue will roll free like a maestro whittled orchestra. And these hands will cradle the bottom side of creativity like a newborn on life support. Art will live as long as we do. Well, that was fun. That's a that's a, a old piece that I haven't read in a long time. So it's like, oh, that's, you know, that's kind of cool to read that. Um, all right, just a few more poems. Um, let's see, I'll write, uh, next poem is called Child As In You. Um, and I'll go ahead and just read that one. All right, Child As In, you scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. All right, Child As In You. And that's child, C-H-I-L-E apostrophe, as in you. It gotta be important how she begins every sentence. I'm wide-eyed as a six-year-old waiting for instructions that don't come in steps, but vignettes separated by long breaths. Say, chow, and I shrink to listen. Makes me forget who I belong to. A boy, a man, a prayer in each inaudible sound. Says, chow, and I'm a congregation. Even the parts of me that have sinned too much to belong to God. She explains the best way to cure a common cough while stirring a pot of spaghetti large enough to feed a family that does not live here, but we're grateful nonetheless. Um, okay, cool. All right, these last poems I'm gonna read. Um, so I'm from Oakland, I miss Oakland. Um, I live in Monterey now because I, um, I teach here, uh, but, but I miss Oakland every day and I don't get to see it as often as, as, I, as I would like to. So I'm going to read a, a kind of suite of poems um, about Oakland or that reference Oakland uh, in many ways. Uh, the first poem is called Grid. The gutters are damp. You can follow them to the nearest freshwater source or maybe the closest garden hose, even though you ain't seen a garden since Lakeshore on the east side. Nothing green around here. Barbed wire choking out the spores chain linked or caged pick your poison style fences line the grid these blocks breed a different kind of prisoner the junkies hang out on west grand the d-boys on broadway they walk from uptown to downtown and back to get a fix nothing green round here downwards more the locals they still call it east 14th says international on a map now still in the east the block after 13th the Chinese hang chickens in the windows between 3rd and 12th Ave, highlands due north, where bullet riddled bodies hang out. They don't ask you about your pain, just your insurance card. Shoot first, but ask questions later. The doctors, cops, 
drug dealers, drug addicts, all shoot first and ask questions later, nothing green round here. Hooray Bay after 29th, with or without a hat, Latin culture lines 34th like a river, street vendors sell fresh fruit and Lucas, get your horchata and tattoo from the same guy, then Fruitvale, where they killed that boy for being brown. His blood stain is still there. They cleaned it, but it's still there. On the platform, under the feet of commuters, they start their race at his finish line. Nothing green round here. More East, High Street, Seminary, Havens Court. They call it the kill zone. The Pac lived on MacArthur in 88, so they steal Machiavelli because Huey died a year later. More East, bombs on the 4th, zoo on 98th. Kids don't sleep in the summer. Lions aren't in cages in the summer. They hang out below 105th and only nap on Sundays after leaving Axe. Nothing green round here. Just mortar, then martyr. Beauty and bronze. Fog around 9 a.m. and smoke around noon. You won't find nothing green, be it paper or plant. They won't let nothing grow in the grid. All that's left when the smoke clears, just bricks and bodies. Um, okay, so these, these next three poems all have the same title. Um, I'm gonna pull them up here. And that title is Sitting in a Wicker Chair Against Floral Wallpaper in Oakland Heat. Sitting in a Wicker Chair Against Floral Wallpaper paper in Oakland Heat. There is a portrait of Huey Newton in my church. It's Communion Sunday and mama has on her good shoes with the gold links. The Jackson boys are dressed to the nines, their pants starch creased and hovering above their snake skins like halos. Huey in a black beret, but gone anyway. What is blood without a body to show for it? In the States, what is more righteous than a gun and a spear sitting at the left hand of God on a worker chair in Oakland? sitting in a worker chair against floral wallpaper in Oakland heat. Worker chair out front since before COINTELPRO bludgeoned the Panthers. We've come because it's Easter and we're hungry inside. Marvin Gaye's falsetto seeps in like a gentle flood and the kitchen becomes a small soul train line for 12 minutes instead. All these bodies bending like prayer. Black means religion is second only to dancing. Sitting in a worker chair against floral wallpaper in Oakland heat. The day America stormed America, I was black and in exile for yanking a tulip from the ground. I shouldn't have, but wanted something more beautiful to die before I did. Call it civil disobedience. Okay, cool. Last poem I'll read is called Today's Prayer. Um, and again, thank you all um, for, for, for listening and, and being so attentive. Um, I appreciate it. All right, today's prayer. Uh, with the, the epigraph here. My son, tell them the body is a blade that sharpens by cutting. Today's prayer is for honing still. A third testament that black folks anchor to their galvanized body and ink. Today's prayer is for a radical revision. And this variation, Jesus grew up in Oakland off seminary and Oakland don't have two cheeks. After the first, you'll discover how sharp black can be in this variation. Simon, Andrew and John are Angela, Eldridge and Huey. Today's prayer is for honing still on a chopping block. Today's prayer is for peer review. Today's prayer is to revise and resubmit. Today's prayer doesn't include submission. Today's prayer is broadcast from Calvary and Longinus didn't get the good side. In this variation, we don't lose blood, just dull shrapnel. Today's prayer is for a blade. Today's prayer is for a self-sharpening body. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Daniel, for all of those pieces, for sharing your poetry, for sharing in this space with all of us. I know I'm so excited to read your book. And so I encourage everyone 
to go and order Daniel's book and uh, read it, support it. Um, I'd ask if there's any other projects you're working on or any other ways people can connect and continue to support you. Um, if you're able to share that now, I definitely love people to continue engaging after this. Word. Well, it looks like there's like links going up in the chat. So I appreciate that. Like the best way to, I guess, a centralized location is just through my website. Um, Divine, Divine, Divine comes out on the 17th. You can pre-order that um, at Nomadic Press. I also have like good news. I just can't share it yet uh, about something else that's that's that's, that's um, uh, coming up. So um, when that comes out, I'll be happy to share it. But for the, for now, like if you want to connect, um, my website is, is the best place. And also like shoot me an email and like, I don't know, share poems or like a thought or let's wrap up about Frank Ocean and, and um, you know, stuff. I'm, I'm kind of down to earth to talk like that. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much again um, for sharing tonight. This has been wonderful. I've, again, I say this every single time, <laughs> but I feel so full and so happy being in this space with all of you. And there's even more poetry to come. So with that, we're gonna kick off our second half of the open mic. Um, and I'm gonna invite SK Williams to start us off. Thank you, Nia. And um, thank you everybody, happy Poetry Month. Um, you know, to go after you, Daniel, is a, is a challenge. But the way that I will um, do that is by honoring you by starting off my, uh, my first poem with a quote that I just took from your poem. Um, and it's, uh, it is, if not God, my mama. And, you know, that's that I, I love that. I love that, um, that quote, because, um, because I feel the same way, you know, it expresses how I feel about my own mother. My very first piece is called beautiful, uh, beautiful, ugly corners. And it's, it's a, it's kind of long, but it's still a small excerpt from this poem that I'm writing about my mother that I've been writing for about um, six months now. Um, my mother turned 80 about a week ago. And um, it's quite a milestone for her because she was given six months to live seven years ago. And, um, you know, we call her the Phoenix lovingly um, in our family. So she turned 80. And um, so, I, you know, I went back to, uh, to writing this piece. It's called Beautiful Ugly Corners. My mother is a hoarder. She's a hoarder of everything, of memories, of photographs, of stories, of people, of things, all too precious to let go of. If you go down into the basement of, your, of her home, you'll find it all there, covered with fear, regret, sadness, anger, and confusion, covered with pride and haughtiness. Head first, it is how she did everything, falling down everywhere, all the way to the bottom and getting up again every single time, unscathed and better for wear. At least that's how she made it seem. Red-skinned, red-haired, covering her shame at her failure at deep, dark blackness, claiming Africa harder than most deep, dark black people. As her indigenous and European ancestors smiled at us from behind her eyes with puzzlement at her denial. This is a Garifuna word, gaganat. It means mixed, is a phrase reserved for those who were and are not pure. Said with suspicion of the stranger, it rings with shaming, saying you do not belong. For the longest, she lamented her inclusion in that box of exclusion, reserved for castaways from the insular clan. So she married the blackest man she could find, my papa, hiding her self-hatred behind her hatred for anyone fair. The owners of the good hair with light skin were constant reminders of those who questioned her belonging to our black, dark clan. We must stand up for our blackness, she would demand, often, bemoaning her failure to allow her African to make its way through but black she is from deep in her soul, from deep in her roots, refusing the results of the DNA that says different, coveting the naps and the kinks that covered my head. My mother is a hoarder. She's a hoarder of blackness, of Africa, of kinkiness, and ample posteriors and full lips and broad noses and everything that makes me me. My mother is a hoarder of things that make her feel safe and wanted in a world that has resoundingly rejected her. I wish she would know how much I'm a hoarder of everything that makes her, her. That's the first one. Um, this next piece is uh, dedicated, it's a sad piece. Um, when I'm a teacher and um, one of my students died last, uh, last year and tomorrow is gonna be a year since she died. She was eight years old. She died in a car crash on 580. Um, her name is Candace Parks. And so this piece is for Candace, just for a while. 
a poem for Candace Parks, who was born April 30th, 2012, and died April 9th, 2020. You will stand in my memory with your sweet smile forever in my heart, and I will always wonder where you have gone. This appeared like a cloud after the rain. But in the deep recesses of my mind, I will be comforted to know that your tiny body, which will no longer grow, has gone to rest. And I will think of your soul as it wanders high above the earth, watching over us, maybe. Letting us know somewhere in our inner sanctum of our souls that your departure portends only another phase of your being. You are a beautiful rose in our garden of flowers, plucked too soon from amongst us, leaving a space where no other will ever grow. And we will guard that space, filling it with our sorrow at your leaving. You are a gift to us for such a short time, happy that even if for a little while you graced us with your beautiful smile when you lingered in our presence, allowing us to love you so. So now we send you on your way, letting you go, letting you go, even though it breaks our hearts to do so. We will send you on your way to rest your small and weary soul. Goodbye for now. Thank you for lingering, if only for a while. That was for Candace. I miss her very much. This next piece is an old piece. Um, it's called LSGH, Light Skin and Good Hair. LSGH, does that mean anything to you? Does it have an effect on you? Tell me about the effect. Is it good? Does it make you feel good? Is it bad? Does it make you feel bad? If you feel good at that expression, maybe you are so described, or it describes someone you love, or maybe your aesthetic. If it makes you feel bad, then maybe you are self-opposed to your blackness and your sense of self, deeply internalizing the hate. Have been made to feel different of an inferior kind. Are we still there? Are we still there? This is the year what? Hmm. We have turned a century, no two, since we were supposed to feel this way, this outdated, antiquated feeling of inferiority at our Africanness. It is internalized, decentralized, and alienated from who we truly are. Hair straightening, nose straightening, skin straightening, all to straighten out the Africa that makes you, you. Growing locks made me feel powerful, grounded like an old tree, pushing its roots further and further into the ground, grounding itself, knowing what it is and where it came from, deep in the earth, creating and anchoring the world. It is a tree, and once the ground becomes shaky, the roots can hold no more, and the tree falls over like we all fall over when our roots are not firmly planted, not knowing ourselves, not loving ourselves, but the other who kills and maims us, undereducates us, incarcerates us, bringing us across oceans, across seas, to build this world at no cost to him and all cost to us. Cost of life, loss of life, love of self, language, and identity, to pollute us with self-loathing and light skin and good hair, to hate the beings that have held on to themselves, maintain the dignity of self in place over 500 years, despite the brutality. Bringing us across seas, across oceans and continents and fields, making us other, forever, opposed to self, lover of the light skin and good hair. Even after 500 years of kidnappings and decimation and eradication of our cultures, our languages, our souls, ourselves, light skin, good hair, LSGH, evidence of the rape of our mothers, the destruction of our daughters, the incarceration of our brothers, who live to tell the tale of the four walls, the gratings through which we live, caged even when we are free. Then come out to look down on you and me, to take a white woman by the hand, despite his treatment at the hands of her man, and treat her like a queen. Put her up on that pedestal, not reserved for you or me while we hold their wooliness in our palms, calming them in the nightmares of their existences at the hands of the man who consistently tries to destroy and decimate their manhood. So in order to save himself, he decimates the womanhood of black womanhood and renders me invisible, all in favor of the evidence of our mutual destruction, replaced by light skin and good hair, LSGH, a high price to pay in self-destruction. Thank you, that's it. Thank you so much for sharing those pieces, S.K. Williams. It's always wonderful to hear your pieces and thank you for, for sharing that tribute to your student as well and bringing, bringing that presence into this space. Thank you. Next up, I would like to invite Dee Allen. Welcome, Dee. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dedicate tonight's portion my portion of tonight's open mic to 
someone who's made the rounds of all the virtual open mics across the planet Earth in the past year, and I've met her through such places. We first met at an open mic broadcast live from Germany last year, and she's here tonight. I dedicate this portion of the open mic to Imogen Arate. And the two poems I'm about to do tonight come from come from an anthology book. And to assist me in that endeavor, I'm going to use the share screen feature. The two poems I'm doing tonight come from the book, The Pope People's Survival Guide Through COVID-19 and the Virus of Poverty. The first poem is from page 22 and 23 in the book. And this speaks to the political climate in America right now and last year by extension. This is called Disease Breeds Disease. Strange new ailment giving pneumonia-like symptoms has a ripple effect spanning our globe, floating on the wind, harm to health. Diaspora of microbes, point of outbreak, Wuhan, China. Within a month, fate's transmission, country by country, bad news travels fast. Reported cases of coronavirus breeds a second disease, one much older, equally contagious, easier to spot the signs. Point of outbreak, the human mind. Modes of transmission, Mainstream media, person-to-person -person contact. Symptoms include stereotyping, side glances, spiteful feelings disguised as jokes, bullying, swearing, unprovoked assaults, avoiding restaurants, insulting internet memes, misinformation, discrimination, lumping together Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, Laotian, and Thai under the heading of Chinese. International travel bans, tendency to run from duck and dodge, straight black hair, almond-shaped eyes, yellow skin. The mistaken notion of Chinese equals virus carrier and sudden memory loss of the simple fact that Asian lives matter too. And that first poem was called Disease Breeds Disease about coronavirus and the resultant anti-Asian racism that came with it. Unfortunately, it is true in 2021 as it was last year in 2020. And the last poem comes from page 24 from the same book. And this is a little personal piece my response to the city of Oakland's shelter in place mandate. This is called the shut dough. The shut lock dough stands between me and the disaster outside I cannot see, having no effect on animals in the least. It chooses to pounce on human beast. Streets nearly empty, cars and buses free to roam. Shelter from disaster is easy to find inside my own home. Libraries remain closed. Restaurants will not serve. Rectangular wood on hinges will help me bend the curve. Flattened for a longer, robust life. Beyond respirator mask and hands covered in latex. No telling how long this infection lasts. While the most foolhardy fall to the float, safety is mine sequestered behind the shut lock dough. And that last poem was called The Shut Dough. And both poems happen to come from the anthology book, The Poe People's Survival Guide Through COVID-19 
and the Virus of Poverty. Now available from Poe Press, my old publisher. From this new mic to yo ears, I'm D. Allen. Thanks for listening. Happy Poetry Month. Thank you, Dee. Thanks for sharing and, and shouting out the book as well. Love to see the new mic. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up we have Tarita McKell. Welcome, Tarita. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wow. Daniel, it's, it's amazing to get a full spectrum of your work. I am honored. Thank you as well as everyone else I've heard thus far. Let me not skip. Oh, Lord, there's been some. But SK, Mia, everybody. Whoa, Lord. Okay, I am looking for that uh, piece. Um, it's new, but it, it, it haunts me. Um, and I guess due to the fact that it's, it has, been a birthday cycle to remind me of where I come from and what has taken place in that change. So fear none but G's gravity of matter. Holy be our name in come around, go around, sound, 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 echo, sing, symbol, bound, rhythm. Cycling 360 circuits, member blood, memory. Mysteries, mystery, carried from ancestral haunting, nerve ending, hand, mind. Force picks up knife, uses ancient guide, thousands of years old in memory. Jayaneme, Jayaneme, except omnipotence, fear none, fear none, track. Trace, backbone, bridge, walking, coxie, book, tales from tailbone, wire, birth, desire, sire, print, copy, give, give, give as demand here. Take me to the water, take me to the water, take me to the water to be baptized. Drive to San Francisco Beach under blue sky, inscribing womb salt fluid, infusing tide, rise and swell by moon, my baby's breath, renew bliss of day. Making way home on Gary, traveling toward Fillmore, underpass, tunnel eyes, pulled right, magnified by three foot tall, wide, giant Neme sculpture, insists that I carve, looks at me, blinks as I drive by, says, we see you, we see you, we saw you, we saw you come up through Western Edition, two blocks from where you lived, a foster child in an old Victorian backyard facing the Booker T. Washington Hotel. Rays remodeled replaced West African and Dinka on Safeway walk on walkway awning 360 degrees course way for 14 year old suicidal teen about to give up on living until you heard hold on a change gonna come hold on a change gonna come hold on a change gonna come out of smells of piss and dead fish, beating, bed wetting, rape, watching foster brother and sister's battery. Rat man sets traps, picks up dead rats. You transform, you reborn, you learn, grow, lotus flower, command your soul from mud, G, gravity, 360 degrees, 27 bones declaring, hold on, a change gonna come. Except omnipotence, fear none, fear none, fear none. And um, then the second piece is going to be uh, my son. I guess it's just, it's calling for my son because the son, just giving reverence to that. My son. 
I will speak for you. Those scriptures masked your testimony from eyes that once knew your light, watched you walk upon waters, oversee flora, fauna, mammal, animal, bird, and sea creature, obey your season's will, my son. Your garden legacy deed you master alchemist, chef, cook, sorcerer of elements, you feed multitudes, flavoring nature's seed, womb, my son. Why falsify your records, hide your light, cut circuitry from innocent eyesight, masquerade one vow well with idol sacrifice, my son. Unclean spells stray from holy wellness creates hell for pathologic wealth, degenerates generations, my son. An icon reads, think not, I come to bring peace on earth. I come not to bring peace, but a sword. Why destroy peace in your wheel done? You a reason life on earth rolls through heaven. Instead, greed eats away trees, disconnects energies, deviates gravity, habitats for humanity, erodes truth, integrity, destitute, disputing life roots. They brainwash memory, branding you secondary awaiting a messiah as though your soul are, are lights are not required my son too many religious saviors too many competitive death plans too many eyes look away from your radiance to revere a rote man my son i need not wait for your return your morning light never ceases for what I yearn. You are my testimony, my sojourn, my light, my son. You not born of man nor woman. You true light of this world. You, my son, our holy reed, our spark of light that never sleeps in heart and lung as we breathe, my son. I will always rise to acknowledge you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tarita. Your, your poetry always has such a rhythm to it. And I feel like I got lost in it and the movement of it. And it was so, so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, I would like to invite Chisoroku. Welcome. Thank you so much, Nia and Moad and Daniel. That was fire, fire literally, and all the poets. Thank you so much. Sweet in the morning. Sweet. After the nighttime shootings, come sweet in the morning. Mouths sky open, heaving tongues with the weight of morning. Good Lord, we berries of the land forced to ripen each morning, only to be smashed underfoot, buried, while we undo vendettas every fucking morning. Did you know this chafing of dark skin comes new every morning? that each patch of our skin holds the bitter fruit of morning can you hear that sweet morning languishing morning wails from the girls whose bodies torn open don't get to mourn in peace that the earth quakes with the ancestors mourning at their battle cry moored to every forgotten warning come Sweet God, won't you carry us home this morning? Every single black woman I see alive is a miracle in mourning. How hard it must be to hashtag say her name every morning. Girl child, 
of the Hamilton winds rise to break, to break, to break this morning's morning. That was the guzzle for the colored girls after Bobby McFerrin's rendition of Sweet in the Morning. Thank you all. Wow. Thank you. That was absolutely incredible. The, the music, the poetry, all of it together. Thank you so much for sharing. Next up, I would like to invite Yvette R. Murray. Welcome. Thank you so much. Greetings, everyone. This is my first time here, and I am so excited about the space. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, I have three pieces for you this evening. The first is the strange case of accomplice liability in 43 American states. One hand can lift up life as well as take. All that is needed is one to be as true as blue cannot be if all is all that they see. One hand can take a life is the asphalt rhyme. All that is needed is one to exist blackly in a metropolis, down home, down any street, anywhere, any, any. The hand of is one hand all to save a life, a heart beat. All that is needed is five fingers, oh, five. Adjust hen on a scales, bring some light, hand him some hot tea, drink. All one hand can play is one song is all that is needed is unbalanced forces, the take, kill, shoot of the I die right there. <clears throat> Bullet points. Obsidian. Obsidian gives strength and patience to overcome a challenge no matter how long it takes. It feels like the slave traders were chased away. It feels like the shackles and the leg irons fell off. It feels like shots were not fired. It feels like the dogs lost the scent. It feels like they went to the correct address. It feels like the cop missed. It feels like bodies were never left on the ground for hours and hours. It feels like they didn't chase him on that Georgia road. It feels like they had let a black boy sleep. It feels like the car was not stopped. It feels like the Igbo were never captured. It feels like nobody followed him. It feels like the officers were found guilty. It feels like Police don't shoot into crowds of black and brown people. <clears throat> I went to see Alvin Ailey perform here in Charleston and I was so amazed at how many Caucasian people were there. And the older lady that I was with said, they're used to being entertained by us. Minstrel man. They are used to being entertained by us. Even old field haulers can move the moon. It's like something only we humans do, a dark and dandy deed at twilight. Even old field haulers can move the moon. Then we paint in colors and faces, a dark and dandy deed at twilight, walking in the dust of children's bones. Then we paint in colors and faces. We got all that jig and that jive. See, walking in the dust of children's bones could be ballet or bebop or both. We got all that jig and that jive. See, from Middle Passage to Carnegie Hall could be bebop or ballet or both. Bring satin and patent leather swan songs. From Middle Passage to Carnegie Hall, it's like something only we humans do. Bring satin and patent leather swan songs. They are used to being entertained by us. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Yvette, for sharing those pieces. It, it's really exciting to hear them. Um, and I'm so glad you're here at Open Mic with us. Thanks for being here. Next up, I would like to invite Andrea Jacobo, welcome. 
Thank you. Um, then, oh, let me fix my screen. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Beautiful poetry tonight and honored to be a part of it. Um, these are some of my pieces that I'm working on. And um, this first one's called Scattered Luminaries in La Casa de Samana Santa. Como una flor blooming, the divine feminine is sleeping through like the nectar that kisses el colibri. Libre como el aire del mar. Eroticism, that nat eroticism is a natural act of liberation. The one that comes from within, yet afraid of what people might do and do it anyway. As I write these words, I'm liberating, liberating myself to step into my most liberated self. I feel it when I'm dancing, moviendo la cadera away, girando oppressive thoughts that my sensuality es una vaina mala, but pero no, it's my power, mi poder, femenina, divina, y yo. That's one of them. Um, the next one is a small one. So this is, that's why it's called Scatter Luminary. So it's like a whole bunch of poems together. So I just want to shift the, the energy. Um, ocean breeze kissing the mejillas of our love. Sand cupping our sitting bones rooted. Windshield wipe gently your hand across my knee as you sit like the lotus of life. Love story in me oozes like the habituela con dulces I refuse to eat during Semana Santa. Love and God will guide me to the promised land of freedom. Tucked between the hello and goodbyes of the vecinos that living on the border and in the in between. Jobs, communities, homes, lovers, friends, la vida y la muerte, the hand of privilege, where does the light escape when our hands shake the rhythmic, the drums, the rhythmic drums of our ancestral land, calling our names, the living seed in the dark, buried in the vibrational energy, rooted in our spirits, calling us, returning home. And the last one is called Justice You Know. Just so you know, my curls are an extension of the capillaries of my heart, nestled between the sternum and the metaphor of my touch, cariciandone, no, cariciandote, caressing you, dreams and streams of blue that sit in the waves of our worlds colliding. Love feels like the warm sun, couché entre nous, sunset between the ends of you, and I, meeting, the collect, meeting and collecting the number of particles of sand between our hands, blessing each vow of our ancestors, calling us to the heavens to guide the path of our union, protecting roots like mangroves that protect the mainland of sweet waters that stream down the peninsula of the Caribbean, wind from our wind season, the things that take years to build our roots. Thank you. Thank you for, for all three of those pieces. And it's so wonderful getting to hear you build upon ones that you've shared. Um, thank you so much. Next up, I would like to invite Raymond Nat Turner up to the mic. Welcome. I think you're still on mute, Raymond. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you for doing what you do. And uh, thank you to the rest of the crew. Uh, this piece is called Seven Surgeries. I'm gonna do two pieces, two short pieces. Seven surgeries and missing left leg later her gnarled left hand still sends signals her missing fingers can't act upon. And she can't write right-handed. These are just a few of her favorite things. 
about the warfare state of warlords of Wall Street. Left eye blind, left ear deaf, deaf. Still, he has surround sound nightmares with weaponized impotence. And gorilla guilt ambushes him in broad daylight since his kills are no longer Lombardi trophies. And his family practice social distancing long before physical spacing was misnamed during the pandemic. These are just a few of his favorite things about the warfare state of warlords of Wall Street. These are just a few of their favorite things about the warfare state of warlords of Wall Street. These are just a few of their favorite things about the powder sugar platitudes politicians parrot repeat ad nauseum at press conferences and from Fox boxes. Boots on the ground, boots on the ground, boots on the ground, in harm's way, in harm's way, in harm's way. Friendly fire, friendly fire. God bless our brave fighting men and women. God bless our brave fighting men and women around the world. God bless our brave fighting men and women around the world. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And this piece is called Test Align. North, east, midwest, southwest, south, down south, up south, out south, south of the Canadian border. Slouched down in his cruiser, slow rolling the hood, or atop his horse, bullwhip barking at shiny bent black backs. 150 pounds of cotton today. It's in his DNA. He's trained that way. Choco, blood choke, bullets to the back, electric shock sheets, garbage bags, or overdoses of fists and foots intended to slay. It's in his DNA. He's trained that way. Trained to follow orders of the 1%, the poor, unhoused, unemployed, on strike, anti war, water protectors must be brought to heal. Raise your right hand, not that high, not that angle. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? So help the founding fathers. I do. Monday morning quarterbacks be damned, second guessing officers. Police work is hard. Foul mouths, disrespecting elders, handcuffing kids, terrorizing teens, beating people up, smashing doors down, smashing heads, invading homes, forcing yourself on women in the line of duty, being a bully, judge, jury, and executioner is not easy. And writing six-figure fiction, sending men and women away on upstate adventures is tough. It's a thin blue line between class and race. Do you know how hard it is to keep your knee on a man's neck nine minutes and 29 seconds? Nine minutes and 29 seconds. It requires incredible concentration. Dispassionate demeanor of a scientist or professor demonstrating for his students. Focus of a TV prosperity preacher preaching scripture about Satan by showing rather than telling. Calm of a Super Bowl quarterback leading his team on a nine minute, 29 second drive to pay dirt. No, you don't know how hard it is to work before hostile mobs, fearing for your life, fearing for your partner's lives, putting another Hulk Hogan down. It's a thin blue line between class and race. Thank you for those. 
Thank you for those, Raymond. As ever, exactly on the point. Thank you. And to close us out this evening, I am so excited to invite Avacha up to the mic. Welcome, Avacha. Thanks, you made it easy because I've been having a hard time unmuting. I'm sorry to be here so late, but I was part of the thing at the uh, San Francisco Public Library. But what I did here was absolutely awesome. I'm gonna put our poetry series in the chat. Please come and visit us the fourth Saturday of the month and support Moed. Support them, not just when you're coming to a poetry reading, but you know, they do stuff all week long, every week, and they can use your support. So this one is for Nina Simone. It's in my book with every step I take. It's called Queen, e Queen Nina, Our Light in the Tunnel. Nina Simone was an eruption our artistic explosion of black pride and power. In a nation tranquilized by the blindness of its own arrogance, the presence of all she stood for reminded us of all our ancestors lived and died for. Her songs told the world that we were worth more than just singing about. Sister was a live volcano, uncontrollable, ready to erupt at any moment. She was the long awaited reincarnation of Benzinga, Fanny Luhema, Anna Corona, and Granny Nanny, a straight up in your face sage, a warrior, a woman brave enough to declare herself king. Nina Simone was an unveiled threat, an unheard of shocking out in the open threat, a terrifying reality check, a made in America too black to ignore omen, chewing up stereotypes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and for dessert, kicking the man's lesser than theories off their throne, Sister Nina's blacker than black magic was so powerful, she toppled our color care system without even trying. The medicine of her voice kissed away the pain in us, tore down the insurmountable walls, walls of self-hatred in us, and gently wrapped us lovingly in a blanket of pride sweeter than sugar cane. Our Nina didn't ask to be respected. She commanded respect from the most disrespectful and refused to accept anything less. In a nation stunned by the absolute brilliance of an unquestionable talents, Nina Simone was the incarnation of the best in us, our strengths, our weaknesses, our joy. She modeled the indisputable pain in us, the beautifully fierce, sensual, proud, but frustrated black genius of us. Her voice was our musical ticket to everywhere we've ever been. Her regal wizardry on the piano keys was a time machine and we were transported from the park bench to penthouses on Park Avenue, from the African savannas to cane and cotton fields, from the humiliation of the segregated South to big city slums and all the way into Carnegie Hall. The spirit of always spoke to us through her and I'm so grateful I had the sense enough to listen. This last one is a short one. Um, it's called Para los uh, Bomberos and it's uh, the bomba is uh, the most African form of music alive in Puerto Rico. And if you haven't heard it, you're doing yourself a great disservice. And it's a tribute and a, a small gift to the Cepeda uh, family. And if you've never heard them, you should make a point of doing that. Anyway, para los bomberos. Tutuntun, como una nota cósmica cantando en el viento. La esencia de tu presencia me encanta. Tu legado, tu espíritu indominable me cura. Tus ritmos inolvidables me persiguen y como una caricia de melodía y tu bomba todavía que me renace. For the bomberos, a little gift for the Cepeda family. Your tuntun, like a note bigger than anything singing on the wind. The essence of your presence enchants me. Your legacy, an unbreakable spirit, heals me. Your unforgettable rhythms haunt me and like a melodic caress, it's always your bomba that brings me back to life. Thank you for listening to my words and thank you for Moab for all you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Avasha, for closing us out. And as ever, it's, it's always wonderful to hear your poetry and thank you for always supporting Moab. Um, I'm, I wanna quickly give a, a second to Andrea who read right before um, she wants to make a quick announcement about another poetry event people might be interested in. 
Yes, thank you so much, Nia, for the space. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, the School of Public Health at Berkeley and MOAD are partnering and having a Arts for Action poetry event, um, amplifying community voices for healing, justice, and health equity. It's um, April 17th from 4 to 6 p.m. We'll be sharing the um, sign up soon. It's first come, first serve. We're gonna have a DJ set and some party. And so it's gonna be a, a whole vibe. Um, please come out. Um, we have the link. I did, we just have to finalize a few things. I just wanted to share that. We're gonna be sending it out um, in, in the next few days. So yes, we'll definitely share it out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrea, for that announcement. Um, and yes, please stay tuned to all the programs that MOAD's doing. We'll be sharing them out through our platform. Um, as Avacha said, this is just one of many programs that we're doing. Um, Elizabeth's also putting another poetry event in the chat that's happening this Saturday. Um, we have artist talks, we have poetry events, book launches. Um, so I encourage everyone to continue attending um, and supporting the museum. Uh, if you're able to financially support as well, we do appreciate that. Um, you can make a donation through our website, which is moadsf.org, um, or donating by your phone with, by texting the number 56512 and typing moadsf. And the last uh, request that I have is that if you have any feedback, um, we have a quick program survey that's in the chat as well. If you can take a few moments to fill that out, we really do appreciate it um, as we wanna know how to best serve our communities. So thank you all for sharing in tonight's space. This was absolutely incredible. Thank you again, uh, Daniel, for your poetry, um, for featuring tonight. Everyone, please go and pre-order the book um, and continue to support each other. So, and I hope to see you again on, what month is it? April, <laughs> April 22nd will be our next open mic. So, hope you can all join. Thank you for being here and have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Bye.